Today we hit double digits week 10 and we've got a good one in store as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens and the Houston Oilers. And we are underway from Houston. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. They'll come out throwing here on first down. That's complete. It's Zay Flowers with it. The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. They'll set up a throw. And oh, that nearly an opening drive on EMT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way you wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Defensively, they came into the game with the understanding they're going to have to slow him down on passes just like this because he was over 100 yards receiving a week ago. And you know they want to get him involved here as well. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and three. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. These two teams met in Baltimore. You might remember earlier in the year with the Ravens winning that game. So a win here in Houston would give them the season sweep. Now a second and six. Hands it off out of the gun. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Dancing to his left. Touchdown! Luke Musgrave, his second touchdown on the season. And the Ravens are on the board first here this afternoon. A long opening drive, but a very successful opening drive. We call that methodical, I guess, when it takes that many plays. Methodical? And almost like a boxing match where you're hitting them with body blows. They can withstand them here. Look, they gave up the touchdown, but you don't feel like a knockout is there. But they keep doing that in the fourth quarter. 
that's when the knockout occurs. And becomes tough for that defense if they're on the field that long. We'll see if they can continue that in future drives. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Drive starts with a run from Gibbs. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Throwing now is Stroud. His throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Stroud looking to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 36. A good pick up there at 22. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. 19 right. Ready. Stroud sets up the play action. He will find his man Chase complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 33 yards that time. It's early, but announcer cliche alert here. Big players make big plays. Should I say in big games, too? Ah, uh, what the heck. And this defense, they're going to have to find some way to slow him down as this game goes on. Because when this combination is going good, they can tear your secondary apart. Come on, First come and on. goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Gibbs is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. Again, it's Gibbs. And this time, he is in. Jameer Gibbs hitting double digits with his 10th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Oilers respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Point after, right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. Team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. McCole Hardman to return it from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. 
And their dreams of an undefeated season shattered with the loss a week ago. Now, look, whenever an undefeated team goes down, you always hear some say, well, they needed that. I don't know, Charles. Is that a narrative that you buy into? Well, I haven't met a coach yet that feels like they needed that loss. You know, that's not something that they're in favor of. But I do know this. People like us, our colleagues, all of us in the media, constantly hammering a team that's undefeated. Hey, do you think you can do it the whole season? Can you carry it the whole way? That does wear down a group. And sometimes that loss, get us off your back, you can move forward from there. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he gets this up past the 30. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. And he ran right through one tackle as he fights forward for a gain of seven. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. Seven yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Well, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes you're fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Second down, and they go back to Gibbs. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Tough spot here, third down and 11. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. That is incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Here's Hardman to return. A 46-yard punt, four-yard return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. He'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in. 
but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Here we go on second and 12. Forced out to his left. This one complete to Nicole Hardman. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Well, that's a real nice job there by the defensive club. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. So from the 37, here's a second and eight. There they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. 74 yards rushing for him now to this point. Playing against a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. And that is incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. They'll try and run for it. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. They'll look to throw here on first down. Eluding the pressure right. The short throw to Musgrave. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. 14 yards that time for number 14. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And some space here. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. A great effort there. With another touchdown, number 24 on the year. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And that run going to put him over 100 yards now for the ball game as well. Yeah, he's really had his way so far, and that's just more of the same right here. All he needs, just a little crease, and off he goes. Now Blankenship on for the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Here's the kick unit now for the Ravens as they'll send this one away. 
no run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Now they entered play on a two-game win streak, and then they've got the open date on their schedule next week. So this is a group that's really looking to hit the break on a high note. And this will obviously be a tough game for them, but go ahead and play this out with me, partner. If they win here and make it three in a row, they get to heal up after that. You've got to think that's an ideal setup and a worthy goal to play for in this one. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. On first and 10, here's Gibbs. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Milton Williams there on the tackle. Second down and eight. Ready. Another run for Gibbs here. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Here's second and ten. Gibbs straight ahead, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. Stroud to throw it. Flushed out right. Oh, he tried to fit it in back over the middle, and it's intercepted. And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. Well, we've seen quarterbacks get away with throwing the ball on the run, no doubt. But this, Charles, I think you'd agree, not the best of throws. And listen, you're not always going to have a clean pocket to step up with the proper mechanics and deliver the football. I mean, that's a given. But you also have to understand your limits and know what you can get away with and what you can't when you're trying to make a throw like that. Now we're first and 10 at the 11. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And in for the Ravens' touchdown. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise they're the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good, and it's now 21-7. to is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. But no run back here. Fair catch, and this will come out to the 25. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. 
Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. All right, I think he's got to be careful as he continues to try to extend plays because he's already been intercepted in this game. And the coverage, they continue to challenge all of his receivers downfield. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And Stroud now to throw. Throw left side complete to Chase. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Here's Stroud. Looking deep here for Chase. And this is caught inside the five. Touchdown. Jamar Chase, 60 yards. And the Oilers get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. Hardman going to bring it out of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. more offense at the line set to get going and with time quickly fading here in the second quarter not sure how aggressively offensively they want to play this I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot well done to sniff that out defensively he had it diagnosed pretty quickly I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one read his keys made the play and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Second and nine now. They'll roll him out right. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They'll look to throw now on first down. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that will bring up second down. Well, he was a busy man out of the backfield a week ago. They got him the ball early and often. I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be a big part of the game plan here as well. Here's second and three. 
from the gun. He'll hand this off. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. So this a two-possession ball game as we get back underway, set for the third quarter. And the fair catch signaled for and taken, so they'll begin this third quarter from their 25-yard line. offense already at the line set to get going this offense Charles had a strong first half throwing the football at least in terms of yardage but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum yeah you're right about that because you know let's face it in the first half most of their focus was in the passing game and to their credit resulted in a healthy amount of yardage so I would think that at halftime they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. Stroud. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Call that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to a little bit more here in the second half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Right side. There's Likely with it. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Gibbs and this has been a familiar break, 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 sight all break, break, afternoon go. as they stop him behind the line second down and they go back to Gibbs and that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield this will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes last week he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they've stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Go. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. But I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we've got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on four. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. A defensive breakdown allows a pickup of 16 on fourth down. And 
that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. Stroud now on first and ten. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. Called a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. Hand off now to Gibbs. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Stroud. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. The fourth down pass play doesn't work out, and this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. We've got a close game. The offense has played well, but right now, they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. They also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 22 yards there, a first down. Now a handoff as they run left side. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 149 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. A running play here on first down is going to go nowhere as he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. If they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. They'll set up to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Pitch and catch there good for 13. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to move the sticks with a gain of four on third and inches. Rolling to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there. And it's second down. 
He was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third play. the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack it's second and 18 they'll set up a throw got a man and he hits him in stride and on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. They'll look to throw. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play, and the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front. But somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. They'll try to run this one in. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Here's the kick unit now for the Ravens as they'll send this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. At their own 25-yard line. Let's go now. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And just looking ahead, it would appear that that bye week is coming at the right time. They'll have two weeks to chew on this one, though probably not one that they want to chew on. A poor performance from start to finish. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. Again on second down, it's Stroud. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to be wrangled down quickly after the catch up at the 45-yard line. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. A shotgun snap to Stroud. 
Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's another first down as they look his way again, this time 19 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad a good gain again that's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Looking middle, and that's complete. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yard. Stroud is hit, and the ball is loose. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth yeah, you'd quarter. you'd say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Fourth quarter, you've got the lead. You have to stay in bounds and run that clock. Coaches, that'll drive them crazy. Sacrifice a yard or two if you have to. Just go down, inbounds, keep that clock going. It's almost like he was caring more about his fantasy stats than it was about winning the game, and that has to drive a coach crazy. The Ravens on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Passed, and now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And this will be scooped up by the defense. And he's got some space here. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Ready, set. Following the fumble recovery, Stroud. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And this is caught on the sideline. Are the feet in? They are. What a catch. A huge play there for Houston. 42 yards. To get back in this ball game, big plays are going to be necessary. And here's one right on cue. Coming up with three scores here in the fourth is not going to be an easy task. But that's good work there to bite off a chunk of yards. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. You now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Throwing now is Stroud. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. They'll try and run it with Gibbs. And able 
able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Six yards puts him right on the doorstep, but now it'll be fourth and goal. All right, ball at the one-yard line, fourth down. What do you say? I say go, because if you can't get one yard, you what's the old adage? If I can't get one yard, I don't deserve to win anyway. Tell your team it's that time. Who's going to get down in the trenches, grind it out, and make sure that ball gets in the end zone? Who's it going to be? Let's go do it. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. So that's the second time this game they've given it up on fourth down. They're now one for three on fourth down conversion tries. But they must feel good about what they're doing, right? They continue to go for it on fourth down. Give the defense a lot of credit, though. They've stopped them two out of three times. Usually, you have fourth down plays that you have dialed up and ready to go and you think are going to be successful. Not so far in this game. The incompletion there stops the clock. Any surprise they're throwing here late? Ordinarily, yes, because you would think enough is enough. They've got plenty of lead, but I've seen this a bunch of times as well. The defense is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. If you just hand it off inside, you're getting your running back popped a lot as well. Sometimes the defense dictates it. If they're going to crowd it, you may have no other choice but to throw it downfield. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he is caught, and he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. That one looks like he'll throw here. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Higgins. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 60 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. On second down, they'll run it here. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards on the play. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. Yeah, able to elude one tackler, but only gets this back to the line of scrimmage. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Back to throw now on second and 10. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. On third down, they're going to run for it here. And he is going to lose yardage here. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about 